Hi, I'm Izzy and this is Dizzy Quilts and Sews. I spent a whole day learning how to use my Cricut machine recently and I am here to share what I made. Before I jump right into showing you the amazing things I've made, I thought I'd give you a little backstory about me getting to own a Cricut machine and getting interested in making crafty things with it. So about a year and a half ago now, I kept seeing YouTube videos and ads um, and also like, you know, those Facebook ads where you can buy a t-shirt custom made for you and things. Most of those are made by small business people who own a Cricut machine. So I got really intrigued, especially because I was making garments at the time and I thought like the idea of being able to put vinyl on t-shirts just to personalize them was really, really attractive. So I asked for a Cricut machine for Christmas that year and Santa delivered one. <laughs> so I have a Cricut Maker, so that's the original Maker machine. They do have a Maker 3 that's out now, but I have the original Maker. And I did quite a bit of research before wanting that one. The Maker 3 had just, just come out when I got mine and there was a, a bit of a price difference and the Maker 3 really didn't do anything more than the Cricut for what my purposes would be. So I just went with the Maker. I've since accumulated a bunch of different tools for it and you'll see them hanging and a little bit everywhere around me. But to get started, all you need really is the machine, a few mats, a weeding tool, and whatever supplies you want to get uh, into. So if it's, you know, heat transfer vinyl or just plain permanent vinyl, just get a little bit of those supplies and off you go. When I got my Cricut machine, I talked about it on the YouTube channel and Andra from Andra Makes immediately suggested I subscribe to a channel on YouTube called Makers Gonna Learn, which I did and they are amazing. So they have a ton of videos on their YouTube channel. They go live at least once a week and show you from beginning to end how to design and make a bunch of different crafts. So I was hooked, hooked. I watched a ton of their videos and wanted to learn more and more and more, but I got a bit of like analysis paralysis. <laughs> I just didn't think I could make all of those beautiful things and I was really scared to get started. So I dabbled here and there. The one person who got really, really excited about the Cricut machine and started using it almost immediately is my daughter Marianne. I mean, she made a bunch of gifts on it. She made stuff for herself. She made things for her work. I mean, yeah, she's done mugs, she's done, um, my gosh, stickers for work. She's done a bunch of things. What I've done or what I had done before this full day course were t-shirts. Basically, I did heat transfer vinyls on a couple t-shirts for my husband, and that was pretty much the extent of it. I really needed to get over my fear of using the machine and the best way to do that was just to attend a workshop live and just do it along with the teacher. Makers Gonna Learn have a crafty day once a year, usually at the beginning of March because March is International Craft Month. So they have what they call a Makeathon and it's an all day event. They are live on Zoom, they are live on YouTube and you can get one-on-one -on -one coaching, you can get your questions answered, and throughout the day you make four different projects that involve four different types of supplies, some of which I never even heard of. So they really hold your hand and you get to craft with hundreds of other people live, which was so cool. 
They had a promotion this year where if you signed up early enough, you also got a box of supplies included in the cost of the workshop. So I got lucky and managed to get a box of my own. Now in the box were most of the supplies you would need to get crafting on Makeathon day. The only things you needed to provide were obviously your Cricut machine, your Cricut tools, some uh, hot glue, and some acrylic paint for one of the projects. And that's it. Everything else was provided in the box, which made it amazing cost value for me. So yeah, so on March 2nd of this year, I cleared my calendar. I told everybody in my life that I was going to be down here all day learning how to use my Cricut machine. So here's what I made on March 2nd. The first project involved using a blank. So basically a blank in Cricut terms is basically anything you can apply heat transfer vinyl to or sublimate onto or just put permanent vinyl on. So it's a blank canvas for whatever it is you're going to do with your Cricut machine. So we made a decorative cutting board and here is mine. It is definitely not perfect. It says the Capsticks established 2016. So Capstick is my husband's family name and we got married in 2016. So this is going to be a super cute decoration that's going to go up in our kitchen. Now, I did mine slightly different from the instructions just because I didn't have all of the different paints they used. I had black acrylic paint. That's all I had. So I painted my whole board black and then I used white heat transfer vinyl for the decoration or the wording. In hindsight, I should have used permanent vinyl even though they used heat transfer because the some of the lettering or some of the yeah some of the lettering here has some of the black paint on it because I didn't wait long enough for it to dry and it started bubbling with the heat and yeah the application is definitely not perfect this is not supposed to be twill tape this is twill tape I had in my sewing room but um, in the real project they used jute I don't even know if that's how you say it in English but it's jute <laughs> So basically just to tie it really cute for a rustic look and because I painted mine black with white lettering I thought it looked modern um, so the extra pop of color here thought you know I thought it fit well not that there's any pink in our kitchen so I may have to rethink it but this is not glued on or anything it's just tied on so I can take it off and put another color on there depending on whatever decor I'm going to put this in actually we might take this to the Island house. Yeah, that would fit really nicely with the kitchen over there. So that was project number one. And even though it is not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, I was so proud of this because I'd never used a blank like this. I had never heat transfer vinyl onto a solid, like I always did it on fabric. So yeah, I learned a ton here and had a lot of fun and I did manage to make this in the one hour that we had allotted for this project. So I was able to keep up with the crew, with the Makers Gonna Learn crew and got my little cutting board all done. Project number two was probably the most involved project out of all four of them and although it didn't take more time than the cutting board I didn't feel as relaxed <laughs> throughout as I had with the cutting board. So here's what we made. A fun keychain with an acrylic blank, some beads, a swivel hook, and we even made the box. Now, I'm in love with how this turned out. And I'm going to take, see, the box opens like this. And then you have your keychain hooked onto a backing here. And then to take it off, you just have to unhook it. 
And I want to show this to you up close because here, I don't know if you, yeah, I think you can see it. It says M. So this is faux etching. So this is vinyl that basically looks like your keychain was etched onto. I'm going to make give this to Marianne. So that's why I put the M on there as a just a cute little gift. I had so much fun making this. As I was making it, because I was hurrying and everything, I made a couple mistakes, but we have access to the video for life um, just because we signed up for Makeathon, and I will be making a ton of these. So if you are a family member and you're watching this, chances are you're going to get one of these at some point this year because I had a lot of fun making it. Even the box was really cool. And this is just a 12 by 12 sheet of cardstock, some clear vinyl, and yeah, you cut and, and score all the necessary lines and then you have a super cute little box. So that was project number two. Project number three was not a, a difficult one, but it was not as successful as what they were doing, what the teachers were doing. So this is a photo holder. So it has a wooden base that came in our box. It has a photo holder here, like the hardware, which also came in the box. And then it has cardboard petals and glitter cardboard leaves onto your holder. Now, I think I just went too quickly trying to keep up with the class and I didn't curl my cardstock enough. So my flower looks more like, um, instead of looking like a peony, it looks more like those flat flowers you see on ponds with frogs onto them. What are those called? I don't know, whatever. I mean, it's still super cute and Marianne loved this when she came over and saw it in person. But yeah, like imagine doing these for a party where you can have like your seating cards or your, your ID cards on here, or you can just have a cute photo and put this in your bedroom or yeah, I loved this. And I'm gonna try to make it again. You can find these blanks, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, probably Joann's if you're in the US. Um, I know there's a Michaels near me and they have a ton of these blanks you can use. So I think this would be super fun to put all over the house in different colors and yeah, really, really fun. So that was project number three. Project number four was my least successful make and it was a print then cut uh, so it's basically a printed vinyl project that you would print on your printer, then cut on your Cricut, and then use a heat press to apply to a piece of cloth. So this little zipper pouch came with our box, and the goal here was to print some pretty thick vinyl, and you can see, well, you can barely see, it says maker. So the thing was to heat transfer this onto the pouch first and it creates a nice like oh my gosh like raised texture with the lettering and then what you printed on vinyl was basically a square um like a brown tan ish square and when transferred onto your pouch makes it look like a leather patch all very, very clever, but my printer just refused to play ball that day. I never got to print on my vinyl. I still have the vinyl, so I will definitely give it a try at some point, but yeah, I just never got this one finished because my printer just refused to cooperate. So I will, when I'm not so upset with my printer, <laughs> I might give this one a try, but I loved the idea of what this would look like with a faux leather patch almost onto this zipper pouch. So this was project number four and the last project of the day. 
My biggest takeaway from this day is that when you are crafting along with people, even if you don't know any of these people, it's a lot less scary uh, and you feel a lot more comfortable just jumping in and trying the thing, which was my issue um, with using my Cricut down here all by myself all this time. I didn't want to mess up. I didn't want to waste any of the supplies. I mean, not that it's crazy expensive, but it's not cheap. And it can be very deflating if it doesn't work out and you're, you're all by yourself and you're not quite sure how to troubleshoot it or what went wrong or what you need to do next time. So spending a whole day with crafty people led by amazing teachers was just what I needed to get a little less fearful with my Cricut adventures. I learned how to use blanks, I learned how to use cardstock, I learned how to use heat transfer vinyl, I'll eventually learn how to use printable vinyl <laughs> once my printer decides to cooperate. But I had so much fun and I learned a ton. And I had so much fun, in fact, that I've already signed up for next year's Make-A-Thon, which is going to be on March 1st, 2025. I'm already looking forward to it. And because I signed up so early, I will be getting a box again next year. And the box for me just made it so simple because I didn't have to think about gathering a million supplies. Everything was in my box and all I need to do is plug in my machine, plug in my hot glue gun, plug in my, my heat press and start to play. Now, I'm not affiliated with Makers Gonna Learn in any way, shape, or form. However, if you have a Cricut machine and you've been scared to open the box or you've only really just dabbled and tried a thing or two, you have to check out Makers Gonna Learn on YouTube. They do have a membership, so you get a bunch of cut files, a bunch of different fonts on their website. There's courses that are exclusive to their members and I have signed up for their yearly membership but you don't have to if you just go to their YouTube channel there are a ton of videos on there that will teach you a bunch of different techniques um, how to work with a bunch of different supplies with your Cricut machine and they do have videos not just on the Cricut maker but they do use the Explorer they use the Joy they even use that huge one that came out last year, the Cricut Venture, which is a which basically allows you to cut like poster sized things. But yeah, I highly, highly recommend Makers Gonna Learn. They're just a fantastic bunch of people, to be honest. Their energy and their like, yeah, I just love the company as a whole. So yes, get that box open, get that machine out, and start crafting with your Cricut. If you're a garment maker, like you can print so many cool things on your t-shirts and on garments and yeah, it's a lot of fun. So there you go. So those were my adventures during Makeathon 2024. And I seriously was on a high for hours after it. Like there's nothing better than, well, there could be a few better things, but it was amazing to spend an entire day down here crafting with some people and learning. Now, you know, in my day job, I'm part of a learning and development team. I teach for a living. I love to learn. I just do. So it was extremely encouraging, validating, fulfilling <laughs> to be spending a day learning new techniques and how to use my Cricut machine. You have to tell me in the comments, do you own a Cricut? Are you using it lots? Are you afraid of it? Uh, just let me know down in the comments below. I plan on doing a few Cricut videos here and there on the channel. This is not going to turn into a Cricut channel. Do not worry. But now that I'm feeling a little less fearful of this machine of mine, I'm going to be using it more. And I would love to share what I get up to on the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Please give the video a like on your way out if you liked it and consider subscribing. Thanks again and I will see you soon.